What's going on growers? It's James Pigioni coming to you live from Jersey. Today, me and Tucker are going to show you how to easily grow eggplants in containers so you can be harvesting fresh eggplants from your own backyard or patio. Let's go! First, we need to choose which variety of eggplant that we want to grow. If you want, you can go with one of the standard black varieties, something like the Black King eggplant, or you can go with one of my two favorite varieties, which are the Rosita eggplant, right here, and the Rosa Bianca. After choosing which variety we want to grow, next, we can start getting our seeds planted about six to eight weeks before our last expected frost date. I like planting my seeds into cells and using a quality potting mix like the Happy Frog soil. After filling my cells with soil, next, I plant my seeds about a quarter inch deep. Then I water my cell in and cover that cell with a plastic cover. Then I take my tray, I bring that into the house and place that on top of a heat mat. I place my tray on a heat mat because eggplant seeds will germinate based on the temperature of the soil. So if the temperature of the soil is like 80 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, then the eggplant seeds will only take about eight to 10 days to sprout. Once I see the eggplant seedlings start to first push out of the soil, I take my tray and move it to a location that gets full sun. I prefer to bring my trays into the greenhouse right before the seeds actually start popping out of the soil. If you allow the seeds to pop out of the soil in a location that's dark and is warm, then the seedlings are gonna get really tall and leggy. That's not what we want at all. So what I do is I bring my trays into the greenhouse just as those seedlings are emerging out of the ground. After all my seedlings sprout, I go through and I thin them out so there's only six seedlings per cell. Once the seedlings have two true leaves, they're ready to be transplanted into larger pots. I like going from my small cells to a four inch pot. I don't like going from the cells to a five gallon bucket at this time because I just don't have enough space in my greenhouse. It's just too cold outside right now to take the plants and put them outside. So what I like to do is take my small small cells, transplant them into a four inch pot, then I could bring those into the greenhouse. A five gallon pot, it just would take up too much space in the greenhouse. After a couple weeks of the plants growing in a greenhouse or an indoor grow room, they're ready to be transplanted into their larger containers. Before I do that though, I want to mention one of the most important things when growing in containers is good drainage. So what I like to do is I use these food safe five gallon containers that I get from Home Depot or Lowe's. Then I flip them over and take a half inch drill bit and drill a bunch of holes in the bottom just to make sure that it has good drainage. This looks like a lot of holes, but what I do is use a tray at the bottom of my bucket. So when I water, all the water that flows through gets captured in the tray and then the plant can suck it back up. This way I'm not just like running water through my plant and just flushing out all the nutrition. Now that our container's ready, we can start getting our soil going. And you could either use a high quality potting mix or you can make your own soil like I do. My basic soil mixture consists of three equal parts. One part, compost. The other part is either cocoa core or peat moss, depending on whatever you want to use. I like to use cocoa core. And the third part consists of either perlite or vermiculite. Perlite's going to help with drainage, vermiculite's going to help with water retention. So dependent upon the soil you want to build will help you decide whether or not you want to go with perlite or vermiculite. Then I take a tarp and I mix all my soil together with this tarp. I'm using mushroom compost as a compost component. And because it was used to grow mushrooms, some of the nutrition is a bit depleted. So the mushrooms have sucked out a lot of the available nitrogen. So to compensate for this, what I like to do is add half a cup of an all-purpose fertilizer. Now that our containers are filled and our plants are matured, we can start transplanting them into their new five gallon bucket home. When I fill my buckets, I purposely only fill them about 80% full. This way, later on, I could go back and take a top dressing of fertilized soil and put that around the base of my plants when they need it. I also inoculate the plant roots with the mycos. This way I make sure that I get the mycorrhizal association. Then I bury the plant at the same depth that it came out the other pot. I want to take a quick second to mention me and Tuck just dropped the fall merch and we're super excited about it. We're really happy with the way it came out, so if you want to grab one and sport it all season long, grab one at jamesprigioni.com. It's very important that before you bring your plants outside for good, that you first harden them off. Hardening off is essentially just getting your plants slowly acclimated to the outdoor growing conditions before putting them outdoor for good. To do this, first I take my eggplants and I bring them outside in a shaded location just for a few hours, then I bring them in. Then as days progress, I continue to bring them outside and leave them outside until they can stay outside for at least 24 hours. After this, I know that my plants are hardened off and ready to stay outside for good. At this point, your eggplant should be in cruise control. Just make sure that they have adequate moisture, but you don't want to overwater. What I like to do is judge if the plant needs water based on the weight of the pot. So I'll lift the pot up. If it feels nice and light, then what I'll do is come out in the morning and grab a watering can or a hose and then water the plant at the base, making sure that I don't get any leaves wet. Wet leaves just spread disease issues. So I'll water it all in like that. 
If I water too much, the water will collect at the bottom of the tray and then the plant will suck that right back up. After I have it all watered in, what I'll do is lift the pot up again just to judge the weight of it so that if I come out tomorrow or the next day, I can judge how much lighter it's gone and if it needs water or not. As the weather starts to warm, I like to use a thick dice leaf mulch at the base. This way we can help retain the moisture, but we can also keep the temperature of the soil cool and consistent. Once the eggplants start blooming and producing, they're going to be drawing a lot of nutrition from the soil. So to compensate for this, what I like to do is I'll take a five gallon bucket and I'll put either some of my homemade soil or some potty mix into there like a happy frog soil. Then I'll add a half a cup of an all purpose fertilizer. I'll mix the two together, the soil and the fertilizer. I'll take that top dressing and put it around the base of my plant. After that, I'll water the plants in and then put my mulch back around the base. As eggplants start to head into production, the plants can get really heavy based on the weight of those eggplants and can start pulling the plant down as you can see here. So a good idea is to have a stake in. You'll notice that I don't have a stake in here, although I should. What you want to do is get your stake into the pot before the plants get too large. The best time is when you're first putting the plant in. This way you're not disturbing the roots of the plant. When it comes to harvesting, you don't want to wait too long to grab your eggplant. For instance, this one down here is past ripe. They taste a lot better and less bitter when they're young. And also, the more eggplant you get, the more it will produce. So make sure you pick your eggplant when they're young and small, more like this one. A good way to gauge when they're ripe is if you take your thumb and you press the skin in, if the indentation doesn't spring back, then they're ripe and ready to be harvested. Another good way to tell is the eggplants will be ripe once they get that nice, glossy, high gloss shine to them. If you're new to gardening or you've never grown eggplants before, I suggest trying the Rosita eggplant. Look how absolutely beautiful the fruit is. Incredible color to it. It's got a nice, mild, sweet flesh to it, white on the inside, excellent flavor. And also, the plants are extremely prolific. An overall great plant and an heirloom. So if you're new to growing eggplants, I suggest trying the Rosita. That's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. I hope this video equipped you with some of the tools, some of the skills and some of the information to be able to grow some of your own eggplants at home in containers. It's just such a rewarding and incredible experience to be able to grow some of your own eggplants, especially in containers. Because if you don't have the space to put them in the ground, like you only have a patio or something, you can't let that restrict you. You can't let it stop you because it's very you know, plausible and actually quite easy to grow food in containers. There are some advantages for, from growing in containers as opposed to in the ground. So don't let uh, you not having a lot of space to plant into the ground be an excuse for you not to plant something. You gotta get some organic stuff growing and eggplants are an excellent fruit if you're pretty new to gardening. Me and uh, Tuck wanted to mention, look at the guy over here real quick. We'll get a quick shot of him. He's out here when it's incredibly hot out. He doesn't have a, a lick of quit in him. He's the king, he's the boss, he's the leader. So loyal, absolute beast this guy. So spam some hearts down in the comments if you love seeing Tuck in the videos. I also want to mention before I let you go to check out some of the merch at jamesprigioni.com. Grab a shirt, grab a, some kind of merch or something. Be a part of Team Grow and just support the whole growing community. I also wanted to thank one of our new channel members, Cassie. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for contributing. Thanks for having your hand in you know, a lot of the things we do out here. Me and Tuck can't thank you enough. We're having a blast out here, but it is incredibly hot out. So we're going to cut the video here. Tuck and James will be back again real soon. We out.